Well, as if our federal government wasn't enough of a frightful and demanding presence in our lives already, along comes ABC Indigenous Affairs editor Bridget Brennan saying we should fear and revere it even more. Brennan was specifically referring to the proposed Indigenous Voice to Parliament, which had been sold to us during the federal election campaign and by Labor as a benign but inevitable addition to our constitution. The television advertisement promoting it was suitably humble in its proposal, saying all it wanted was a, quote, referendum for constitutional recognition of Indigenous Australians. Well, I thought as citizens they had this already. As Jacinta Nampa Jinpa Price explained on this show last night, there are some rather more pressing issues facing Indigenous Australian communities right now, such as the despair and depression caused by the almost complete absence of work and education and the ensuing family breakdowns and domestic violence. The Voice will solve absolutely none of this. So what should ordinary Australians fear or revere about The Voice? Let's ask Australia's most deadpan commentator, Tim Blair of the Sydney Telegraph. Tim, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. Now, mate, let's start with a quick observation about the Australian sense of humour. Tony Abbott once observed that the laconic aspect of Australian culture didn't come from the convicts or sailors who disembarked from the First Fleet, but from our Indigenous brothers and sisters who needed a certain stoic humour to survive the various interactions with their new neighbours. Now, I think there's much in what Mr Abbott says here. Tim, we are constantly being asked to apologise for this and give constitutional recognition to that, but would it be a bigger step forward if we instead formally acknowledged that the stoicism of the original Australians has made a valuable and unique contribution to our collective culture? Look, absolutely. And I think we shouldn't overlook in this that the longest running practical joke in Australian history was launched by an Aboriginal Australian. Ernie Dingo devised the Welcome to Country ceremony just as a time filler, really, when he was hosting an event in Perth, I think for either visiting uh, Pacific Islanders or, or uh, Maori New Zealanders just needed to fill in a bit of time. So we came up with this welcome to countries thing. Now, it's brilliant. Like, for the next several decades on, Whitey has been dutifully reciting those words. I mean, they, they really owe Ernie some, um, quite, quite besides the debt of gratitude <laughs> that they owe him for, uh, for giving, um, giving these guys a way to uh, take the knee without taking the knee. They owe him royalties. He should be putting in a claim. It's a, it's a fantastic, like I say, the longest running gag in Australian history. Good on you, Ernie. 